Let's talk about bonding. Let's say you have one atom, could be hydrogen and another one. Why not, why not just do two simple hydrogen atoms? Now, each one of these hydrogens has one electron uh, existing around the nucleus. If I bring these two uh, atoms close together, well then the electron from one atom is attracted to the proton in the other atom, and the electron in this atom is, att is attracted to the proton in the other atom. So there's this mutual attraction between the electron over here and the proton there and the electron here and the proton there. And you can feel that attraction with snatoms. Now, of course, this isn't electrical attraction that we're feeling, but it, it simulates that feeling. And if you release them, they form a bond. And in forming that bond, they release energy. That you can hear in the form of sound. The same thing happens with bonds on the atomic scale. When the bond forms, energy is released, and if you want to break that bond, you have to go in there and uh, put in work. You have to put in energy to separate these two atoms apart. So this is a common misconception, and it's one of the main reasons I was inspired to make snatoms in the first place. It was the idea that bonds store energy. They don't. I mean, I think on the macroscopic scale, if you ever want to bind things together, maybe you have to get a bunch of tape and wrap it up and put in energy to stick things together. You know, we think of things requiring energy to stay together, but on the atomic scale, it's very different. Things come together because they can achieve a lower energy configuration together than they are apart, meaning that they give off energy when they bond and it takes energy to split them apart.